If you've been using the pre-installed Mac apps, you should definitely give these apps a try because the default apps are good, the alternatives are even better. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Yuka and I create videos about tech for the everyday creator. If you like this video, subscribe so I can keep you updated. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the default apps and alternatives to those apps that I use on the daily. First, let's talk about the browser. Safari has been getting a lot of nice updates in the last few iOS, Mac OS, iPad OS updates. There are new things coming on the Mac OS Sonoma Safari update as well, which I'll probably talk about in another video, which you'll be able to update this fall. But my recent absolute favorite browser has been Arc. Arc is a Chrome-based browser, so you can still use all of your Chrome extensions, but there are so many great features that come with Arc. One of the unique things about Arc is that you can divide your bookmarks and activities into spaces. This is kind of similar to like a profile feature, so you can have your personal space, you can have your workspace, and you can divide up to whatever you want to do. You can move around different spaces and you can create a new tab here. If you create a new tab here, just go to google.com, this stays in this space so it doesn't affect anything on the other spaces if you're going back and forth and doing different types of activities within those workspaces. This is really helpful not to clutter your view and your space so you can stay focused on what you're doing within that kind of mind space, hence space. <laughs> and so if you are a tab hoarder like I was, you might have a bunch of tabs lined up on top of your browser and you don't even know what's what because the tabs are so small you can't even read what the title is anymore. So that doesn't happen on Arc because all the tabs open on the side, it keeps going horizontally. Your tabs are not getting squished by other tabs, which is amazing. The other feature that has been really, really game changing for me is that you can archive tabs automatically. So if you go to your settings, you can set the time that the tabs archive after you've not touched it in a while. So I have it set to 24 hours. So after 24 hours, the tabs that are open and I haven't touched it in 24 hours will automatically archive. It'll close and it will not be here when I open the browser again. So obviously you can change this to 12 hours to up to 30 days. But for me, at least, if I don't touch it for 24 hours, it means that I don't really need that tab anymore. And if I really do need it, I can move this tab up here. And this kind of acts like a, I guess it's a bookmark of some sort. So if you move it up here, it means that you need it later. So it won't automatically close it for you. So in this video, I don't have a alternative to an email app because I actually use Gmail on here. And you can see that there is a little feature when you hover over your Gmail, it shows you little snippets of unread emails, which is also kind of great. The little bookmarks up here, it's a shared bookmark across all your spaces. So it's kind of like a super bookmark. If you swipe to different spaces, it'll it's just pinned on the top always. So I used to use different email client apps before, but I feel like this solution is the simplest and it works for me for now. So I just use Gmail on my Arc browser. That was just a simple introduction to Arc and I could probably make an entire video about Arc if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, so let me know if you're interested, um, if you use it already. I didn't know I could love a browser this much, oddly. It's definitely been my favorite since I've started using it and it's completely free, which is awesome. Okay, so the next alternative app I wanna talk about is the calendar app. The Mac default calendar is okay, I think. <laughs> it does its job, but I've been using Cron. Cron is actually owned by Notion now. It, it got acquired a while back, um, so it is a part of the Notion family, I guess. And I just love the simple design and the ease of use. It honestly looks kind of similar to the Mac default app. It's very minimal, very clean. Uh, you can only sync your Gmail accounts, which might be a problem if you are a user of iCloud or 
Outlook or any other calendar feed that you might be using. But my source of calendar has always been Google, so it works out for me. For me, I work a lot with people in Japan. So it's really essential for me to have two time zones showing. So I have the EST here, JST here, and I can even add more time zones here. So let's add London and you can even add Los Angeles. So you can have up to four time zones. So if you are a international business person, this will be great for you. Another feature I really love on Cron is the scheduling snippets feature. You know when you get an email and they're like, let's hop on a call, let me know when you're available, and you have to type out when you are actually available on which days, on what time. It's kind of an annoying task. So what you can do is create a scheduling snippet. You can choose whenever you want to say you are free and it just creates this little snippet for you. So it says, where 30 minutes during the, any of these times work for you. And then you can even change the time zone it shows in. So it's really handy for me when I want to schedule something with people in Tokyo because I always get the time zones mixed up and it's so bad. <laughs> this is a really handy feature for me. So I can just copy this text snippet on my clipboard and it also includes this link that's kind of like a Calendly link. So the person who gets this email or message can click on this link and schedule time with you. And you don't really have to do the back and forth of like, how's this time? How's this time? It just works really seamlessly. So Apple Notes is also getting some updates in the fall, but my main text-based notes app has been Notion for a couple of years now. I do plan to make in-depth Notion videos on this channel as well. And so I won't go into too much detail in this video, but I've been obsessed with Notion just like everyone else. The main thing I use Notion for is to project manage all of my content creation things. Since now I have two channels to manage, it'll become a little bit more complicated than before. But with Notion, I love that you can have the same database but shown in different ways, in different formats, and with different filters as needed. I also cannot live without page templates. So for example, when I have an idea for a video, I don't have to create everything from scratch, but I have a template for my YouTube video, so I can just click on that. All of the necessary structure will appear automatically, so I can just start pumping out ideas and don't have to worry about all the cosmetic stuff of like the fonts and the colors and everything. I can just start creating. The thing about Notion that gets everyone hooked is that you can basically create your own app almost. There is so much flexibility on how you can create content, create different blocks and structure them. And it's basically like building your own app without needing to code. So if you haven't checked out Notion yet, I think you really should at least give it a try. I'll also leave a link below. Figma is mainly used in the design world for UI design, UX design, web design, but I use it to create visual notes. I like to think of it as a supplement to my Notion. Notion is very text-based, and even though I just said there's so much flexibility, there is not much flexibility space-wise. So you're basically writing on like a digital paper. You can keep writing, but it's always going to be a scroll vertical paper. So on Figma, it's basically like an infinite canvas. So you can zoom in, zoom out. It's very expansive. It's almost like you have a giant piece of paper instead of a letter sized paper. I use Figma to design graphics for my content creation stuff. Uh, I also use it to brainstorm. So you can have like post-its and have brainstorms with other people. It's easy to share and use with other people simultaneously. So it's really great for brainstorming and working together. So I also use Figma to store screenshots, um, design merch, design thumbnails. There is just so much you can do with Figma and it's not just for like app design. Some crazy things that we've done is we have actually played games 
within Figma, actually Fig Jam. So it's like, we can draw together, we can play games, um, I have screenshots, and it's just like a really fun way to work with people visually. And you can also do it just by yourself. So not just with other people, but it's kind of like a visual note-taking app for me. If you are using the default calculator on your Mac, then this calculator will actually blow your mind. My calculator app alternative is called Numi. A lot of things that I have the need to calculate really quickly on day-to-day -day basis are probably related to converting measurements such as miles to kilometers, pounds to grams, yen to dollars, Fahrenheit to Celsius, etc. Numi handles that so easily and I can just type out what I want to convert to and from and it just shows me over here. And the great thing is it's like a memo pad so I can keep whatever I calculated on here. So if I tend to do the same calculations over and over again, I can just switch out the numbers here. For example, I do a lot of USD to JPY conversion and vice versa. So I can just be like $500 and like $4,000 and I could just change this number every time I need to do the same calculations. So these were the five Mac apps that I love using every day and is an alternative to the default Mac apps. Let me know in the comments if you have any apps that you love that I should check out. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!